There comes a time in every man's life when there is a need for separation. It could be a separation from family, friends, colleagues, or things. Whatever it is, these are usually crucial and critical periods that may require much of our willpower and may be painful. It might be difficult for a teenager to be separated from his family when moving to college, and a couple would have to leave certain things to come together as man and wife. Whatever the case is, and no matter how difficult it might be, we see that separation here is for a much better cause. To attain something worthwhile, in the same way, God separates a man to bring him to a much greater purpose in life. You might want to take a good look around you and walk with me through the annals of history. The great men and women of our time—Abraham Lincoln, Kenneth Hagin, John Bunyan, Mother Teresa, and many others—were people who had to go through desert periods, times when they were alone. They were not just followers of the crowd and multitude. They did not go along with public opinion. They had great visions and knew that to access uncommon things, they needed to be alone. In the same way, and through countless ages, God has been in the business of separating men and calling them to a place where they can be alone. Why would God want you to be alone? You might ask. We shall be considering some of these reasons. One. He has a greater purpose for your life. When people hear the word alone, the first thing that comes to mind is loneliness, abandonment, and rejection. However, being alone has its positive implications. As much as God said in the book of Genesis that it is not good for man to be alone, and went ahead to create the first woman, Eve, we see that when there are important matters, He gets a man alone. This is to reduce the number of distractions that might cause a man to deviate from the purposes of God. When God called Abraham, He told him to leave his father's house and go to a land where He would show him. This was a call to separation, a call to a higher purpose in God. God had to get to him to leave his roots, which meant leaving behind his former beliefs, customs, and mindset. God had a higher purpose for him, which was to make him a father of many nations. If he had not heeded God's call or had decided to remain in his father's house, he would never have been able to achieve God's purposes for him. He would probably have died an ordinary man, and his name would not be listed as one of the heroes of faith. Is God calling to a higher purpose in life? Are you willing to pay the price of separation? Understand that if God is calling you to be alone, then He has a plan in mind for you. He wants you to step out of mediocrity and lead an excellent life. He wants to lift you out of the crowd and bring you to the top. As much as everyone wants to be outstanding, only a few are ready to do what it takes. Looking at the life of Jesus, our perfect example, we see at the start of His ministry, He took time to be alone. For forty days and nights, he was in the wilderness before he was tempted by the devil. Your assignment needs you to spend time by yourself, away from the crowd, away from the noise, and away from things that could easily distract you. Your lone periods are moments of preparation. In being alone, you discover more about yourself, your assignment, and the resources you need to function in your assignment. Those periods will shape you and prepare for the greater plans God has in mind for you. So, when you're going through that wilderness, have it in mind that there's a greater glory awaiting you. Two, He wants you to totally depend on Him. Many times we claim to love God and trust Him, but when we're faced with certain situations, we discover that we still have options in our hearts outside of Him. We try to find alternatives by ourselves, and we still put faith in mortal man. Until we get to a point where family, friends, and relations have deserted us, we do not remember him. The command in Proverbs three five to six, to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and acknowledge Him in all of our ways, is usually difficult for many people. And so, in order to build our faith in Him and Him alone, God sometimes allows situations that will make us realize that the arm of flesh will fail, and then cause us to put all of our hope on Him. 
It is at this point that many of us understand that the only reliable personality in the world is God. When he called Abraham forth, he separated him from all that he could have turned to for help. In essence, he had no other option than to turn to God for his need. When you find yourself alone, don't be scared or bothered. Just lean on God and let him carry you on the wings of the wind. In being alone, you would find that there is no better force to partner with than the Almighty God Himself. 3. To sharpen your focus. In the parable of the sower, the seeds that fell among thorns became choked. The thorns represent the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches that did not allow the word to take root. These are things that would easily distract and make us lose track of our purpose on earth. It is easy to become carried away by the circumstances that surround us, societal trends and popular opinion. In the midst of these distractions, many find it difficult to focus on God. We easily forget that we are just travelers and pilgrims on this earth and should not be carried away by the events that happen along the way. To sharpen our focus, God brings us to a place where we're alone and can look to him and focus on our assignments. Joseph spent considerable time alone in the prison. Moses was alone when God appeared to him while tending his father-in-law's flock. And Jacob stayed back alone when he had an encounter with God. You don't have to struggle to drown the voice of the world when you're alone. Your attention will not be divided in different directions and you will be able to achieve more at a faster pace. Sometimes it's possible that even our loved ones can hold us back and keep us from doing that which we are supposed or meant to do. 4. To prepare you for an assignment. For every assignment, there is a need to get the necessary resources that will be required to carry out the assignment properly. You do not learn to fight during a war. Rather, the training must have begun some time before. The training does not take place in the open. Soldiers have often trained in isolated barracks or forests, usually far away from civilization. Another reason God would want you to be alone is to prepare you for certain assignments that would require your total concentration and attention. It is a training period where you learn to use the weapons in your arsenal. David was a little shepherd boy taking care of his father's sheep alone. It was a moment of training for him. God was building him to become a leader and king in Israel. It was the skills and attitude that he developed during this period that helped him defeat Goliath and then go on to become one of the greatest kings of Israel. Jesus spent time alone in the wilderness to prepare for the ministry that was ahead and so did Paul. After his encounter with Christ on the way to Damascus, he became blind and for three days was alone praying to God. It was a form of preparation for what lay ahead of him. It is in the place of being alone that you receive instructions and resources that will help you fulfill your mission here. 5. To deepen your fellowship with him. It is increasingly becoming difficult to have deep and consistent fellowship with God as a result of the various activities that have now become a normal part of our lives. While we sometimes lose ourselves in our service for God, we neglect the place of real fellowship, which is God's utmost desire. Encounters with God can only be had when we separate ourselves from the world and come to a place where we're alone with Him. When we are cumbered with the cares of the world and have so many things calling for our attention, it would be almost impossible to hear God when He's speaking to us. Jacob had an encounter with God when he was alone, and so did many others in the scriptures. God is calling you to come out and be separate so that you can experience a deeper fellowship with him. So ask yourself, what price would be too much for you to pay for the presence of God? Remember that whatever God does in your life is for your good. If he wants you to be alone, it's because he has a purpose to achieve. Even if it seems difficult, just trust him. You will not necessarily be alone because he will be right there with you and his presence is worth more than anything you could ever ask for. Just let his will be done in your life.